Hi, this is Bilal from Spackle. In this video, I'm going to show you our SketchUp Connectors latest feature and it is Revit to SketchUp workflow support. If you ever try to transfer your designs from Revit to SketchUp, you know how time consuming and frustrating it can be. And oftentimes you end up creating your designs from scratch inside SketchUp. Or you can export a DWG file from you know, Revit and try to work with that inside SketchUp. But in that case, you lose all the materials and all the metadata is gone. Uh, recently, SketchUp announced its Revit file importer, which is only available with the studio license. You need to pay an extra 400 bucks for that. But I'm going to show you how you can send your models from Revit to Speckle and receive it in SketchUp. Let's get started. In order to follow this tutorial, you need to have Revit connector and SketchUp connector installed. If you check the top right corner or the description of this video, you can find tutorials on how to achieve that. I'm assuming you already have Revit connector and SketchUp connector installed from now on. And here we are in Revit. I created this very simple shed in which I have a topography and a couple trees, a, you know, a, a walls, windows, some furniture elements, stairs, etc. You know, different categories from Revit. I'm going to use the simple model in this video just for the sake of time. But at the end of this tutorial, I'm also going to try to receive the advanced architectural model from Revit's sample models. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project, new stream, and let's name it Revit to SketchUp. You can give it a description or you can make it public or private. I'm going to make mine public and edit, uh, add the link to the project uh, at the description of this video. Okay, so a new project, a new stream is created. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send everything in this model into this project. But first, I'm going to check where I'm going to send, which is going to be the model. We have a default model, default branch named main, but I'm going to create a new branch and name it as a simple shed. Oops. You can also give this a description, but I'm going to skip that and click on create. Okay, now I switched to the simple shed model and my selection is everything, which means that Speckle connector, the, the Revit connector, will convert everything in this model, including the, the family types, the project information, everything, and send it into Speckle. So I click on send and now what is happening is that the Revit connector is converting all the Revit data into a Speckle format, which is platform neutral. So you can work with this data in other environments as well. In this case, we are going to receive this data inside SketchUp. So let's switch to SketchUp now. Here we are inside SketchUp and I'm going to enable the Speckle connector. Once you install it, you would see the speckle connector icon floating around. I just docked it here. So I'm going to click and enable it. And let's refresh to see our new project here, Revit to SketchUp. So if you remember, we sent to a model to a branch named Simple Shed. So I'm going to switch to that and click on Receive. So what it's doing now is that it's converting from Speckle format into a SketchUp format, basically. So all my Revit walls, uh, Revit furniture, Revit topographies will become SketchUp geometries. Okay, the receiving process is done. As you can see, it came in a way that is that makes sense inside SketchUp. So let me talk a bit about what we are doing when we receive from Revit. The first thing we do is we convert Revit categories into tags. So let me actually enable the tags. And if you check here, you can see that Revit categories, doors, floors, furniture, etc., everything came as a tag. So if I hide windows, for instance, windows are hidden. If I hide walls, walls are hidden. Let's try to hide topography. So yeah. 
everything came in its category and in its tag. The other thing we do is we create levels inside SketchUp as well. So if you, you have a better context of where you are in your model, if you had a multi-story building and you know, you're, you're floating around uh, with these levels, you can uh, easily understand where you are in your model. The other thing we do is we create section planes from, uh, from levels. So let's, for instance, enable the first one. I'm gonna click on right click, active cut. And as you can see now, and let's actually switch my camera to parallel projection and go to top view and let's hide section planes as well. So I have kind of like a plan view inside SketchUp. So if I wanted to, I can easily, you know, move stuff around. I can do my design, uh, et cetera. But yeah, we're not interested in that in this video. The other thing we do is we convert your 3D views from Revit into scenes in SketchUp. So if I switch back to Revit, you can see, and let's go to Project Browser, you can see I have the 3D view and then I have 3D view 1 and 3D view 2. Let's switch back to SketchUp now. And as you can see, 3D view 1 is right here. The, the camera angle is exactly same as Revit. Let's go to 3D view 2. And here it is, right? Okay, so the other thing we do is we organize your model in a way that makes sense inside SketchUp. What do I mean by organizing it? I mean, obviously, the layers, the tags, and also the outliner. So everything comes as a single component first, and inside that component, your model is named by their Revit family types, family names, category names, etc. For instance, if I wanted to check this component, let's go to its entity info, I can see that it's a furniture bench locker, and its category, its tag is furniture. If I check this window, for instance, you can see that its tag is Windows and its name is this. And obviously, we are converting your sketch, uh, your Revit materials into SketchUp materials. So, for instance, if I check this material, I can see that it's a gypsum wall board. Let's check this one. Oops, sorry. Let's check this one. It is grass. And then we have this one, wood, cherry, etc. Okay, so this is basically it. But the beautiful thing about Speckle Connector is that it's not a one-time import from Revit. We are actually creating some sort of like a link with your Revit data and your SketchUp data. What do I mean by that? Let's think about in a real life scenario where you where architect models its model in Revit and then it adds some materials, but you are using SketchUp, for instance, for rendering and you're using Enscape for that. Why? Because SketchUp gives you SketchUp is easy to use first and then you can do some uh, texture editing inside SketchUp where you can't do that in Revit or you know, you're more comfortable using SketchUp for rendering purposes because it's easy to place, you know, new components, etc. There are many reasons to why to go from Revit to SketchUp. The beautiful thing is that the, you know, the design is an iterative process. If you receive from an architect the first design, for instance, in this case, uh, you know, we received this model and then you have your walls, the furniture, the topography, etc. And then you replaced some of the default Revit materials with some fancy looking landscape materials. Let's do that actually. What I'll do now is I'm gonna replace this topography with landscape topography. So I'm gonna to go to the material editor of landscape. Here it is. And then I'll use this grass and then I'm gonna replace this with an landscape material and let's say that I'm going to use various vegetation uh, grounds, maybe. Yes. So I'm going to replace it with this one. 
So I'm going to click on replace and now it's an Enscape material, right? The same thing is I'm going to replace this gypsum wallboard with a Enscape material. Let's search for maybe gypsum. Oh, there is no gypsum. I'm going to go to concrete for now and let's replace it with, with this one. Let's click on replace. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for the wood material here in, in the chairs. So let's replace this in the bench. Let's replace this with a wood material from, I don't know. Uh, we don't really care for now. So I'm just going to replace it with this one. Okay, so yes, here we are. We have replaced some materials, etc. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to Revit, right? And let's say that you ended up moving this component to somewhere like this. And then I don't know, you moved these trees to here. And yeah, that's basically what you have done. Right, so we have changed the position and the rotation of this bench and moved this tree. Okay, so let's go back to Speckle now and go to Data Exchange tab again and let's send everything again. Okay, it is sent. Now let's switch back to SketchUp. Here we are and let's enable the SketchUp connector again. We are still in the simple shed model and it's going to receive the latest version we have sent from Revit. Let's click on receive one more time. And here it is. The position of this tree have changed and the rotation and the position of this bench also changed. So we are creating some sort of like a live link between Revit and SketchUp. I can do it one more time if you want. So let's Add another chi, another bench here, right? Let's move it. Let's go to data exchange, sand again. Okay, it is sent. Let's switch back to SketchUp now and receive the latest version we sent from Revit. And here it is our new bench here. And the beautiful thing is that if you take a look at it, it is still using the material we have defined inside Enscape. So you can actually, you know, replace your materials coming from Revit with textures, with custom, you know, custom things basically. And even if you receive a new version, these, the SketchUp connector will use the new material you defined. And if you check the outliner, you can actually see that it's not, you know, it didn't create a duplicate, you know, geometry, uh, like importing, you know, when you import, you need to import it, delete the old version, etc. It's not what is happening. We are creating a link in an object level. So we are only changing the objects that have changed, basically. We're not, you know, recreating everything from scratch. All right, now let's do the same for advanced architectural model. I opened it in Revit and let's open the same project we created, which is Revit to SketchUp. I'll get into there. And then if you remember, we created a model for the simple shed. Now we'll do the same thing for this model as well. So we can store different versions if we wanted to create the same link we created with the simple shed model. So I'll create a new model, new branch in speckle terms and let's name it as Advanced Architectural Model. Click on Create. Now a new model inside Speckle has been created. Let's send everything in this model into Speckle. So I'll click on Send. Now again, it's going to convert everything from Revit into its Speckle equivalent. All right, so it is, it is sent now. And this process took a bit longer than the Simple Shade model for obvious reasons. Let's view this in Speckle. And this is how it looks like in, in Speckleverse. Uh, one thing I realized is the topography is not green and that is probably because it doesn't have any material inside 
Revit. So let's quickly check that. Yeah, it doesn't have any material. So it, it, uh, it even though it looks green in Revit, it's not going to look green inside SketchUp. So, okay, let's receive the same model inside SketchUp now. So I'm going to switch back to SketchUp. And again, go to Revit to SketchUp. Let's refresh it. Okay, here it is. If you remember, we have sent to a model named Advanced Architectural Model. I'm going to switch to that. And let's click on Receive one more time. So first, it's going to download everything from Speckle, and then it, it'll start constructing them inside SketchUp. All right, there we have it. The advanced architectural model now inside SketchUp. And if you remember, everything we said is true for this model as well. So let me actually hide the section planes. So again, you can see, you know, your levels here. Let's zoom into another part. So yeah, you can see that it's organized by its tags. We automatically hide the mass category, the rooms, etc. So it doesn't get in the way. And the outliner is organized in a way that, that totally makes sense. All right, so that was it. If you had any issues while following this tutorial or you have a question, you have a feature request, feel free to let us know at speckle.community where you can connect with other speckle users or get direct support from the speckle team. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.